the Hail Mary comes from a few different verses. The beginning goes, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. This is from Gabriel's greeting to Mary, in Luke 1, 28. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. This is from Elizabeth's greeting to Mary, in Luke 1, 42. Mary repeats that generations will call her blessed in verse 48. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, and at the hour of our death. This isn't a specific quote from the scriptures, but Mary has already been said to be the mother of our Lord, and the last part only asks her to pray for us. Note that the Hail Mary doesn't ask Mary to do anything through her own power, it only asks her to pray to her son. We value Mary's prayers even above those of the other saints, since she was free from all sin throughout her life. Blasphemy. Romans 3.23 says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3.10 and 5.12 also. It's hyperbole. Scripture sometimes uses generalizations without mentioning specific exceptions. For example, we all know that Jesus the God-man did not sin and come short of the glory of God. You mention Romans 5, 12. This verse states, that death passed upon all men, but we know there are exceptions to this. Both Elijah and Enoch are said to have been taken into heaven instead of dying. Yet Paul still said that everyone dies. Mary says in Luke 1, 47, that God is her Savior. Why would she need a savior, if she never sinned? She did need a savior. However, the full redemptive power of Christ's sacrifice was applied to Mary perfectly, even before she was conceived. This was done, so that our God would be born of a perfectly clean vessel. Mary is often called the Ark of the Covenant, because she carried Jesus, the basis of the new covenant. But all of Mary's sinlessness and perfection was only possible through the one sacrifice of Jesus, which was able to be applied to her, because God is beyond time. Mary gives a sin offering in Luke 2, 22. It was part of the Jewish law. Jesus was also circumcised, but he didn't need the circumcision to mark him as a child of God. This is pagan goddess worship. Catholics praise Mary, but this is not biblical. It's not worship. We recognize the great blessings that God has given to Mary and ask her to pray for us, but we don't place her on the level of God. The Catechism affirms in paragraph 2096 that we worship God alone, and paragraph 971 specifies that our treatment of Mary differs essentially from the adoration given to Jesus, the Father, and the Holy Spirit. Then why do you call her Queen of Heaven? Queen of Heaven is shown in Jeremiah 7 and Jeremiah 44 to be the name of a pagan goddess. There are false versions of every truth. We see in Exodus 32, 4, that a golden calf is called the gods which brought Israel up out of the land of Egypt. This was false, but there was actually a real god that brought Israel up out of the land of Egypt. We call Mary Queen of Heaven because of Revelation 12, 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars, and she being with child cried, travailing in birth, and pain to be delivered. Verse 5 continues, and she brought forth a man-child, who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God, and to his throne. Psalm 2, 9 shows us, that the one with this rod of iron is the Messiah, and his mother is Mary. I've seen pictures of Catholics worshipping her. The Pope bows down to Mary's statues. The statues and paintings are merely focus points, icons that point us to what they represent. It's the same way, that we have pictures of people we know in our homes or our wallets. Do you have pictures of loved ones who have died? We may kneel when speaking to them, but this is not an act of worship. People have knelt to kings or other honored people in history without worshiping them as gods. That is against the second commandment. Nothing is to be worshiped besides God. The Catholic Church took out that commandment and split the ninth and tenth into two separate ones. Now that's just not true. Any source you look at will show that we just number our commandments differently. Catholics and Lutherans keep the prohibition against graven images in the first commandment, since it all relates to worshipping false gods. We all have the exact same ten commandments, but this doesn't prohibit all statues, even in the Old Testament. We see in Exodus 25, 18-20, when the Ark of the Covenant is being made, God ordered statues of cherubim to be built upon it. 1 Chronicles 28, 18 likewise orders the building of cherubim statues. In Ezekiel 41, 17 to 18, Ezekiel sees carved cherubim in his vision. In Numbers 21, 8, Moses is ordered by God to carve a serpent statue, and the people of Israel are healed when they look upon it. That serpent statue was a precursor to Jesus. 
it was destroyed in 2 Kings 18, 4, when the Israelites started to burn incense to it. They started to worship it. But statues of Mary and the saints are not to be worshipped. Even statues of Jesus merely point us to reflect on how God took on the form of man, to die for our sakes. You believe that Mary remained a virgin, but this is not true. Mark 6, 3 says that Jesus had brothers and sisters, and also Galatians 1, 19. I'm sure you've heard that Catholics believe these to be cousins, or possibly even stepbrothers and sisters. I have heard that claim, but it's a little tough to swallow. Well, buckle your seatbelt and get ready to take notes. Did you just use a metaphor and an actual suggestion, back to back in the same sentence? Huh. Yeah. I think I did. I'm tired. How many topics are left? Jesus' brothers, the Eucharist, faith and works, infant baptism, immersion, the Sabbath, the Apocrypha, and the Beast of Revelation. Oh. Is that all? Well, that stuff won't take any time at all.